Yeah. Hello, happy Friday, sun's shining again, wonderful, isn't that? Um, let's have a drink. I've got a student today again, he obviously doesn't start whinging, like some of them do. <laughs> okay, we've got Jack Vetriano. Can't say I'm a mad fan of his, but... Uh, a friend of mine, a young lady who's just turned 70, says, been plaguing me to death for months and months. Can we do another Jack Vetriano? I think the last one we did was, um, what's the one on the beach? I forgot about this. Uh, the Singing Butler. We did a few on the beach, didn't it? Uh, the last one we did was The Singing Butler. I quite like some of his figure studies, and he goes a lot ruder than this, and some of them are quite interesting. Uh, somebody did say, can we not do a rude one? But I thought, no, we better not, because he'll start uh, calling me, some of you. So, if you want to try your rude one on your own, that's fine. We'll put it on the page. But um, I quite like this one. It's a nice, peaceful one as well. I'm sure it's actually someone who was on the TV about who he painted. And she, I'm sure she's uh, someone who's married to a member of the royal family. Anyway, I might, I might be wrong, but uh, <coughs> the painting is called In Thoughts of You, yeah? And it's quite subtle tones. Uh, I've read up on his palette, actually, for this one, uh, because you can't find much about Jack Vitriano. He doesn't do many um, videos because he's a very meticulous, slow painter. The only one I did see of him was uh, What Artists Do All Day, which is a few years ago now. Uh, I think he's 60 odd, isn't he? 67 or something now. And uh, he actually spent all his time painting the side of a car on this painting, painting and at the end of it he scrubbed it all out anyway. So, you know, so that's what I mean. He's kind of temperamental as well, as we are, as artists, yeah? Mm -hmm. So don't call me, I also might cry. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I do like some of his work. I can't say I'm a big fan, but the nice oil paintings. And he's not, he's not recognised apparently still by the big galleries in London, you know, the establishment, the art establishment, because he copies from books. Anyway, we copy from photographs, so what's the difference? Photographs were there to help artists create paintings, so uh, very contradictory really. Anyway, so I'm using white acrylic gessoed paper. Lining paper, man, yeah? You need the acrylic, you need to gesso it to stop the oil paint soaking in to your paper and the acids will just eat it away over the years. So I've got plastic coat on top so the oil can't get through to the paper. It stays on the surface and dries hard, okay? The thicker you use oil, the longer it's gonna to take to dry. So we start from thin to fat, okay? And your final tones should be actually pure white. Usually working from dark to light. Okay. I'm not putting on the painting on this one. I'm going to sketch it and just start blocking in. Okay. And his palette, which I was going to mention earlier, we've got ivory black. Now, I don't usually use black, but he uses it a lot for the greyish tones. And if you look at his work, it's usually quite warm. It's on the warm side. There's no blue in there. All right. So there's a lot of sienna, well not a lot, but touches of sienna, touches of red, uh, things like that, you know, and the black dirt and thing. I mean, the whole figure is more or less black, yeah? Uh, but we don't just do a black because we don't want to just create a black shape. And then if you do the figure first, and this lovely sheet as well, because if you look at the sheet, it's got shades of uh, uh, different warm and cooler tones, you know? Uh, so you can have black on its own. Mixed with the ivory black and white make a lovely kind of cool, uh, cool kind of shade. And then if you put some sienna with it, you get the warmer tones and a bit of alizarine, you get these purplish uh, mauve tones, yeah. Uh, the light in the window is kind of, it looks like it's dragged the paint over the top of the window. But we're going to sketch it first, the only gold in there, there's a bit of yellow because we're using the yellow on air. 
and she's got a lizarine on the front of her face and her arms yeah we've got red candles yeah and we've got gold and yellow to sienna and yellow for your frame but the rest of it are all these tones of kind of grey okay the sheet squint your eyes is lighter than the background and the window is lighter than the sheet just try and remember that so it's light mid-tone very dark yeah so it's light mid-tone middle tone and very dark so we're going to sketch it first uh, we'll probably all finish this today I'm not that bothered because you can carry on with it yeah I'll try and get you off to a start where you know we need to block in areas uh, getting your drawing right <coughs> is the main thing I don't know if it squares up or anything like that it might do yeah but we can't we've not got time to do that but if you want to square up that's fine all right so uh, I hope you can see all that because it's a bit dark in here today I don't know why. anyway um, can you see me? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to sketch it. And we actually, because we were looking from a photograph of Jack Vitriano's painting, that's uh, that's uh, yeah. what <laughs> I, forgot the, I forgot the word actually. But he uses photographs for books, so I'm using a photo. But see, anyway, it doesn't matter. Really anyway, we still do the same thing with the figure. And with the figure, I've got a square piece of paper, I've actually cropped the painting. So it's more square on mine, so because I, I want to get the squareness of the picture, yeah. Um, I'm not really trying to capture exactly what he does because it's all about really, really detailed stuff. I mean, his brushes, as you see in paint, he's using like one of brushes in places, very thin lines and things like that, yeah. So we can try and capture this. If you look at my window frame, where he's got these shutters, it's right in the centre of my picture. So I can use that as a reference. And if we use charcoal like that, it's a straight line, all the way down to a cup of tea. And it actually, if you fit the picture up into quarter, into third, um, halves, you can see, you've got this section here, and we've got that section there. So the cup of tea is not far off the middle of the picture. So if we drew, we can actually start by drawing the cup and then the top of the finger, yeah? And it sounds a bit stupid, but if you get that in, everything then from that radiates from it. So you get the fingers and the wrist, like this, and the hand, like that. We just make sure the shapes join up. Uh, the elbow's gonna be about here, okay? And then we're going up to the shoulder, and the shoulder is above the cup, so we've got that angle. Again, I'm going to measure and draw shapes. Use charcoal, right? And then we're going to join up the figure, like that. Oh, we guess she's wearing a dress, so we've got the, the shape of the top of the dress and the shape of the front of the dress as it comes down from a shoulder down to a back, which is a straight line. And then we get this shape of the chair, the back of the chair, and the shape around her elbow. So all that is black more or less yeah and then we get the arm again we've got the elbow which is quite a dark shape there's no far shortening there very simple her head is actually one head if you measure it and two heads go down to her elbow so that distance is going to be her head as well you can see so if you go over her head one and then take that down to her elbow from her head and then we've got the neck as well don't forget the neck because you, you've got a thin neck. So from there to the head, like that. This is, it's just the same as kind of um, squaring off, but we're not spending all that time squaring off. We're actually just uh, looking at shapes and trying to get the correct shapes. And then you can see a fringe. Yeah? If you look very, very close, you can see the eye, the cheek, and the chin, like that. And you can just see a bit of a nose. You know? As simple as that. So the horizon line on this picture actually is the top of the cup because it's a straight line. Like that. Yeah. So that makes it really easy. And if you look at this now, we've got the top of the chair and the back of the chair is coming from here and it's going all the way down to the floor and then off at an angle. It's the floor, you can see. 
again it's giving that lovely negative space uh, I'm a bit longer here but I can give a longer legs and uh, from that the front of the chair and the arm it's going a curve like that and then it's kind of hitting a stool and coming off at that angle just measure the shapes if you can and then from here we've got the legs now a finger is touching a leg and the knee is on the same level as the cup isn't it so you take a line across like that and then we've got the angle of the knee so the, both legs you've got a legs folded yeah and then we've got an angle straight like that so if i use my piece of charcoal and drag it over to get that angle so that is what i'm looking at just an angle going that way uh, it doesn't matter about drawing on it because you're going to cut paint it and then the other leg so this the right leg the one nearest to us is crossing over the other leg but you can't see this bit because that's where her skirt is like that and that comes down so then we get that shape and that goes in about the halfway bit and then we get a shape from here just about under the knee we got about a third of the way up so we're coming from here like that and then we're getting the calf muscle coming down very interesting shape actually because it gets the knee you can't see the other leg now uh, we can just see the front of the, um, the shin and that lovely curve as you get down to the ankle because it curves like that yeah. and then you get the, the foot itself use the head if you're going a bit too long one two to the elbow three to the left shoe four to the floor so it's like three and a half so it's one two one two three which is going to be the other foot it's going from the back there with the stiletto uh, yeah. just a dark shape very thin <laughs> you can't see anything from there all that dark and then just a little gap as you get to the other stiletto of the shoe like that coming down and then we get the shape underneath the, of the shoe which is quite uh, don't forget your feet are quite big yeah because this is charcoal I can rub it out so don't worry about it so you got the curve of the top of the foot and then the front of a shoe okay up so we can block that in if you wanted to uh, we can just rub out this um, a bit of tissue I'm just going to rub out we've got a few lines here so I'll just rub it out see. <coughs> if you've got a rubber just the front of the foot as it curves there yeah. so just get your drawing right get the position of things first yeah. uh, if you could see that it would overlap so that, that would be the back of a car you can see you'd overlap a little bit there where it goes at the back so you get this shape and then the front of the leg now we're all near the ankle then out uh, same with this calf in shoe okay and then we can see the, the back of the footstool which is going through there and that disappears behind the front of a shoe which is disappearing into this uh, footstool front which is like that now it's just a nice shape actually and you can just see the leg it looks like a one of these dragon's feet, whatever they call it, lion's foot, yeah. Uh, what stools we used to have, something like that. Uh, but it's red on top, it's got this red tinge to it. It's not bright red, it's quite dark. Yeah. It's got this lovely shape. So if we bring our cloth, uh, drape, which is on the chair, all the way down to the floor, just in front of the foot there, and then that comes this way. If you can just draw some of these little folds inside the um, the drapery, you know, the drape on the back of the chair. So you're getting these dark edges and light edges, mid-tone values, uh, big triangles like this, you see? 
uh, bit of a fall there. Now this will all help when you start to paint it because you'll be doing it section by section. So it's going from there, like that. And then you got something in the middle. Right, we've got that one, which is there. Then we've got something in the middle, which is there. All coming from that um, arm of the chair. And then this one, in that way. So we've got these kind of shapes. So that goes this way. It ends up going just in front of that. Yeah. You don't have this spot on, it doesn't really matter. You can see the back of a chair and the light hitting the back and the folds in the fabric. And this is quite light, so it's pure white there, near enough. But it, it, it might not be pure white, it's somewhere near pure white. And then we get this fold here, which is an angle. If you can take your time doing these, it's much better for you later on. Uh, just make sure your head is big enough. Yeah? don't want it to be too pointy. If you want to block it in, that's fine. Just look, you know, get your chair coal on it. I'm going to fix it. So if you want to block all this in, then only the dark side. <laughs> you know? uh, it doesn't really matter because you're going to paint all of it. So we've got these lovely shapes and then the shadows. Uh, that gives you a nice long legs, actually. Might be too long actually, but one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just spin there. Three. Yeah. Probably made them a little bit longer than they actually are, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Artistic license. Blends in. So we've got a lovely shape of the back. Uh, it's quite dark, like I said, you can block that in. And you can just see a little bit of light on the front of the chest there. And then her is quite dark and it's uh, curling under. <coughs> so yeah, we'll just blend that. I'm not doing much with this. You can just draw the shapes of these and you can paint them. So if you just use it, your fingers like that, you get the shapes of the drapes, yeah folds whatever so it's help it helps to paint it um we've got a candle stick just behind it now uh, we get to the back of the head we draw a straight line with the uh, charcoal and we've got this lovely shape like this straight line uh, from the top of from just about here we've got a curve comes down curves in curves away it's probably spend more time doing the the objects in the room rather than uh, the figure like that so that's that lovely shape there <coughs> the candles on top so that's another curve and then from here we go down again out and then a curve that way then you get candles so one in the middle two at our side you know, we just block them in, or you can just, this one's a bit high, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, we've got a picture, we've got a picture here, it's quite a tall candle actually, when you look at it, because it's going quite high up, yeah. So you can always paint the background around it later to make them thinner, so don't worry about it. We've got a picture here, above the head, can't see what's in it, but that's the frame, and we just block that in. Okay, I've got the window which I can just about see the shutter, which is about here. And it's straight line. Can you see where the cup of tea is? It's more or less on that level. So the bottom of the window is actually level. And it's actually level here. So yeah, right? this perspective's uh, not spot on, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Because you can't tell. And then that disappears. That's the side. And um, we get the wooden slat, which is just coming uh, on this side. Like a, uh, around the window so we can strengthen that now because that's where our cup of tea is and then we got the other um, shutters again that's coming all the way down to her, her knee 
and it should match up with this one okay so you need it to match where you get this the wood inside there like that with that one okay and then you can see the top it's quite light though because the lights are and then the thickness going up uh, whoops charcoal is really good for going straight lines you just use the side of it uh, so we'll come from here and then just go all the way up uh, they might not be spot on at first but that's okay and uh, from there just in front of my face not the shape of the window I look like I'm a bit <laughs> a bit not straight but that doesn't matter okay Shape of the window, and we got some wind. We got some windows across the street. This is okay, it's like that. Um, and the window frame itself, uh, we got the line, which is actually breaking up. You can see how it breaks up. But then again, the um, the paint's going to do that when you when you drag it over. So this comes all the way down. It might be a bit too uh, narrow actually, because you got you've got the shutters. And then we've got that, yeah, that's kind of a, the outside of the wall. That's what's making it thinner, thinner, sorry. And then you got this length, which is all the way down to windowsill. Uh, it's going past the knee, yeah, right down to where this is, actually. So it's going past the knee there, down to there. That's what's making it longer. Okay. Keep dropping the charcoal and then we got the window frame in that. Uh, we've just got these lovely kind of shapes which are supposed to be buildings in the background and uh, shadows, whatever. And we've got windows here. Uh, and they're just these simple shapes. You couldn't make that be able to just leave them like that. But we'll, we'll know when we do it. Uh, we can see the thickness of the inside of the window frame you've got a lovely streak of pure white there as well so we can do that later okay this is quite dark as you get down to this stool we've got the inside like the decoration in the room uh, but it's because it's kind of through the back of a leg isn't it so it's lower down than that so i don't don't use a ruler if you can help it you'll be here all day with a ruler it's bad enough doing it free hand uh, straight line coming down here. So this is negative shape behind the calf muscle there <coughs> and the difference between uh, the shoe and the back of uh, the heel there. Yeah? Uh, you can't see the front of the foot. You can see the other toe on the shoe which is coming out like that. Way there. It's got big feet but that's just Pointy, not that walking then. And it holds up <laughs> only on a Sunday. Uh, a straight line, and then a straight line just about where the stool is actually. Uh, and then we get to the floor, which is about here, yeah, just below the stool. Okay, so you just see these shapes, and that's quite dark as well, and that blends into it. But yeah, kind of simple. As you take this across, we're getting the same effect here. So we come a bit lower than that actually, down to the floor, can you see? And uh, that's where we get in the bottom of this uh, window. And we've got the shadow there, uh, and some light, and then the, uh, the thick, it didn't even match up that, but that's the, the light on kind of, what do they call it? Bottom of a wall, the brain's gone. Uh, Scripting board. The brain had gone then, where'd it go? I don't know. And that's the floor. Alright, and then that disappears off the picture. And we've got a lovely kind of triangle shape there as well. It's quite good. So I spent quite a bit of time drawing it. So <laughs> we haven't got a long, long time left. But I'm going to fix it so I don't go smudging it with my, um, with my uh, pen. Because it can just mix in. I know we're using black. I'm just going over the um, charcoal. Okay, if you're happy with it, watch this stuff because it's crap on your chest. Right. 
So, are you ready to play? Anybody who's joining us? Just have a, a drink. Look at this weather again, it's beautiful. <coughs> right, here we go. If you... I'm going to use a small brush. I think what I'm going to do is paint the figure first using a combination of black, um, alizarine and sienna, some yellow, and just sculpt the face and the legs and everything. So you get this nice guy. I'll do the stool as well and then from that I can view I can see what uh, this colour or this tone of value is going to be and it's quite warm over it's got more kind of a red in it than uh, anything else you know? um, I'm just being aware of uh, some of these lines not being straight it was so meticulous in his, his drawing and getting things level yeah so that's what we have to do um, I've just put some more charcoal on. It'll be really nice. You can paint over. The beauty of oils is you can go over it. You can just let it disappear. So I'm using a, a nice, a, nice a, a brush that's big enough for me to do details. You've got all these kind of different smaller ones. I've got filberts, uh, flats. Filbert and some flats are really nice for. So I've got some ivory black. I'm going to make some red with it to warm it up a bit, yeah? But it's more or less quite neat. So if I do the dress first, like this, just that negative shape. Now because it's oil, it's going to take ages to dry, yeah? Well, not ages. It doesn't take years, like somebody says. If you use it very thin, it can dry quite quick. If you put it on with the treble, it's going to take quite a long time. But you'll only learn by doing it, okay? A bit of red with that. Got a lovely shape from the shoulder down to the front. And then that's going into the shape around the arm. I'll do the same on the knee. Now I know on the edges of this you can see quite a bit of turks with this, yeah? But it's opaque. You'll find that ivory black, I think it's ivory black that's more of an opaque black rather than... Uh, the other black, what's the other black called? Uh, I've got one here actually. I've lamp black and ivory black, yeah. Well, I'm using uh, lamp at the moment because I think ivory is a bit on the grey side. So, this is quite dark, but it's got colour with it. Can you see? So, I've got some red with it just to warm up the black, really. Uh, I'm coming down to the edge of the chair arm, like that. It needs to be opaque. And this is a skirt, which it follows the shape of the drape on that. So I've got a lovely kind of negative space, which is between the back of a calf, and then that just blends into uh, the rest of the skirt. A big shape like that, yeah. If you think it's too big, we can always go over it. What I have got as well is a fan brush. I know people say fan brushes are doing trees, but they're actually for blending out paint. So you, you put the fan brush on and just blend it out. So you get a nice flat top. We can do the bags of town through here. So we can, we've got the fan brush as well. I'm going to go into the legs, but I'm also adding some sienna now. And if you notice, the top of a knee, we've got a kind of reflected light. But you can't see the join. You can't see the join between... Uh, well, I can't on my picture. If you've got a lighter picture, you might be able to... Uh, you can't see the join bef between the, um, the legs and the skirt. It's just kind of all one tone. But what I'm doing is trying to add a bit more kind of warmth to it, so you get that... Um, you, just, you get the lovely warm hitting uh, stockings or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so just doing the back of a calf, the 
if we're doing here, if you want to leave the live bits like that, you can. Or you can just go over it and. Oh, Jesus, the back. Or you can just go over it and. You can hear him bloody from. Um, back of the leg, into the front. And then we've got wicked dirt on that there, so we just go around it. Alright? Add a bit more black to that, down it up a bit. At the bottom. Squint, take your glasses off. So you can use the same top and then you've done I've just added a bit more black. warmth. Uh, and we're going to the back of a shoe, the back of a heel. Like that. I'm going to need a very fine brush for. Um, Front. And I might make a foot a little bit smaller. Uh, uh, okay. We can always make the, the stool a little bit darker. So most of the air, mixed with the black, uh, going into her hair. Again, more turks. Makes it more transparent. All right. A bit more black as you get to the top here. Uh, the back of the hair is quite warm. You got the, the light. And we start moving on to a bit of a lizarine because this is the colour in the face. Okay. Uh, a lizarine, a touch of red, I think. Quite a bit of touch because it's. Uh, and then that kind of blends in from. Uh, Face. So you got this lovely nice, that's where her fringe is going on the other side of her, side of her hair. And then on the neck you've got a lovely shadow, like that. And we've got some reflected shadows as well. So you've got some alizarine and white at the same time, which is the light hitting the figure. Yeah. Uh, the yellow bit, I'm just going to put at the back of her hair, like this. And back, <coughs> reflecting lights. She got a little bit at the front. That's more a bit of yellow there. Uh -huh. <coughs> kind of dark, a lot darker uh, in the middle. It's got the apple effect there. Yeah? Always darker in the middle. And as you get down to where her hair's curling up, uh -huh. it's a little bit lighter and warmer on top of her. So you can have a bit of white. Do your yellow and sienna to get that, that warmth in the back of her hair. Probably going to add more white to that just to give us that uh, sunlight or reflected light. I'm using the same brush on uh, top of her hair uh, and that goes off at an angle. Uh, there's a little bit more white at the front of her hair. And then the bit down the front where it flicks up, and then all that under the face, under the chin. So, dark, to darken the alizarine, we mix it with black yeah, to darken it. A lot of the time I would use blue, yeah, but uh, we aren't using any blue today. So, under the neck, there uh, she's got a reflected light, which makes it a little bit uh, more white and and the uh, alizarine. You've also got the same one at the front. But we don't have to do this now. I'm just kind of building it up in stages and then looking at the shapes later. All right, and then on the on the arm, we've got Bert Sienna. Coming down her arm, which is like that. And the alizarine, again, where the elbow is, it's quite dark. And then again, the hand, like that. <coughs> she is the darkest part of the picture. I'm using Sienna just to give me some, uh, adding white to it like that, just to give me some lighter tone at the top, which goes into the finger like that. Uh, negative space just underneath. There's rain and black. Uh, which is quite dark with the shape of the hand. 
You can only see that finger, that finger coming out like that, holding a cup. Uh, she might have a handkerchief as well, I've just noticed it. No! So I've got the alizarine, sienna, mixed together. The back of her arm is quite warm and light as well. When you mix these colours, just try and keep them separate so you can use them again because you're going to get the same kind of colours somewhere else, yeah? Now there's not that much here in them, but uh, there is white and sienna. Again, with a bit of yellow, you can warm that up. I know I said we should be uh, aiming to put white in last. On the top of her arm, the front of her face, you need a one air brush. I don't go one air brush, but I've got this one. Lucky. Like Suffice. Just to go the light here on the face. I might leave just a little bit of the uh, underpainting. And then you can see the purple at the front of the chest. All right. And then the top of the arm, again, a bit of light there. Cup, quite dark. Just a dark shape. And then it's got light at the top where the rim is. You can probably do this right at the very end. But we'll put that in. Just so it gives us an idea. If you look at her uh, knee, now it's quite dark, but you've got this light just catching the top of her knee like that. and the foot. You see, soften it with your finger. Nice, wash your hand, and then the other knee is the same underneath. The light catching the front of the bony part of the knee. All right, and then we're going to move down to. Did you mix in white in? I'm mixing white to just lighten things. With, with I'm going to move the same thing down to the footstool, which is red and black. I'm not using a small brush, but I'm going to block these in first, and then we're using a bit of white with a red and yellow to it to warm it up. So I've got cadmium red. And that and um, some white to it, knocks it back a bit. <coughs> and we're just painting the shape of the stool there, with the light catching it. Okay, and that is the shadow from the stool kind of thing. I'm going to go a little bit darker and then get my big brush out because we're going to use some burnt uh, burnt umber. So this is this side of the stool. Uh, okay, big brush, you get fed up with it now. So if I look at the shapes around a face, I'm going to mix some sienna, uh, white, uh, blacks with it to darken it. If you look up here, can you see that tone? That's more of like a, a burnt umber and white. It goes into the side of the, the side of the um, the light on the window. As you're coming down, we're going a little bit lighter. So you're adding more white to it. This is how you can block things in a lot quicker. And like I said, we don't have to finish it today unless you want to. Bit of burnt umber as well because that darkens it. Nice and dark around the window frame. And the, uh, the frame on the picture, I should say. So we spent a little bit of time doing the lady. And now I'm adding more alizarine here, actually. Because uh, I'm going to go around my candles and, and, and we'll probably start blending some of these. Because it doesn't look like there's a lot in. Tonal value. Uh, changing tones on the wall. Like I said, I'm going to mix that together. 
Hey, Ryan, you can't do the video. And then we'll book them in later. But we're going a little bit lighter, you can see. Bit more white. Tiny amount. Uh, pet. People tend to go too white too soon, so just add tiny amounts like that. As you're coming down now, uh, you can see through that, but we're going to paint it later. I'm just going to paint the shape. You can always go lighter as well. All the way down at the back of it. And as we're coming to the front, more chirps, more white. And a bit more sienna. You can use a little bit of warm yellow just to warm it up. As we get into this stage, which is a little bit lighter. And we've got the chance, you can see, because it's oils, to do some blending. <coughs> Slowly does it, top of her head. Look at the background, it's lighter than her hair, her hair sorry. And then it goes darker than the light catching her hair. But we can lighten that later with a forehead brush. Alright, blend it in. Now, if you've got a version printed off, it's probably a different colour than mine. Because if you go online, you'll see all sorts of different versions with different colours. Yeah. So I have never seen the original, but I can bet it's not exactly the same colour as this. Yeah, go around the nose, looking. A bit more white, sorry. <coughs> to block in around the neck and the chin. Next, more we've got loads of white there, and then that's kind of the highlight on the front of the chest. She sat there, and she sat sitting there. Sat, sat. I'm just testing this tone on the, the shadow as well on the chair for the sheet because it looks quite similar. I see. So I've got this nice kind of dark shape. When you mix white and ivory black, or lamp black, I should say, you get a, a blue tone. A blue kind of tone to it. So it's, it's cooler. Uh -huh. And we're going that way. So I'm just going to block that in as well. And do that. Uh, put a shape there. That's shadow, and that's the shadow. Right. Again, at the back of her, it's darker. It's darker here. It's close to that side. Bit of warmth. What colour is this? Let's see, white makes it warmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've got a bit more warmth just down there. You can, all the way down. <coughs> Using a lizardine as well. Keep it thin paint, don't go too thick because you don't want it to be um, too. The thicker you go, the more it will be more difficult to paint over the top. So because we're doing sections, we can save a lot of this kind of highlights. You can see the highlights you've got on the on the wood and the panel there and things like that. And we can put that in later. But we can add little bits while we're, we're just working around it. Okay, because that's quite light. Um, that's a shit. Back of her head. Again, that's kind of warmer, so a little bit more yellow with it. 
the back of her head and her neck. And you can see the definitely need to uh, lighten the areas um, where her is more. Isn't it difficult painting really, really direct? It's difficult to paint and talk at the same time. Mate, yeah, so. <laughs> I'm just talking. What am I talking? <laughs> Rubbish. I go down the back of her shoulders, around the chair, down the back of the drapery, blend it in. It's opaque, yeah, but you can see through bits of it. Okay, I'm going to come across here now, down there. I think the oil, beauty of oil is it keeps its uh, consistency, it keeps its tone better than acrylic because acrylics tend to um, go darker as they dry and the oil doesn't. So I'm going to add a bit of yellow mixed with that Belgian tea cup. <coughs> so I'm in a tea cup, a bit of black and some burnt sienna. Just a foot at the back here and there where these creases are, slightly darker at the top. I've uh, got this one as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to dart in this. Down to the floor. Okay, I'm going to be on the other side of the figure now because I've got the same tones mixed. Uh, smaller brush, actually, I'll keep that to one side because we're going to be using it again. Uh, yeah. If you're using a smaller, if you want to get a smaller area, use a smaller brush. Yeah. So we're adding the light uh, just underneath the her arm there. Uh, that's the light on the chair as well, I've just left it, okay. A bit of white, quite warm, and the shutters are lighter so I can use more light, more white in there. Okay. Uh, paint around the knee, which is the back ground, so we're doing the back there. So once I've done this bit, I can use, go back to my uh, big brush again, you see. So on the back of my leg, uh, the calf. shoe a bit more if I'm going too fast for you I'm sorry but I'm trying to get as much done as I can myself so if you want to slow down and do it at your own pace great bring that down and then go into where the sheet is um, I'm just actually using the charcoal to give me those shapes. Uh, and then as I come around to the back of the, or the front of the stiletto, nice and pointy. Yeah. And chop the bottom off. And then go up to that sheet. It's going to be nice and light there. Around the stiletto down to the stool. Alright, now I can go back to my big brush and it's a combination of all those, it's going alizarine and it's going white and burn sienna -y. and it's got this warm, it seems to be more warm near the figure. I don't know if that's intentional there's the light in the room or whatever he did take photographs he does work from photographs as well you know not just from boots 
<laughs> bit of black mixed with our alizarin. Because as you get into the floor, it's going quite dark as well. Oops, it'll evaporate quite quick. Blend it. Get my dark up there. Keep picking the uh, turn from the up. Red, black, and mix white with it. Okay. You get a nice dark shape at tone. No, oh, Marilyn's doing this. <laughs> and through all that stress. It's not the end. Celebration. Light between the lights, between the lights, the same. Oh. Lights between them. <coughs> As you start getting the tonal values together and stand back, you'll see where certain areas are slightly darker than others. You know? But then again, you know, it, you might not have done it perfect yourself. But you don't have to. And just a bit more white to become opaque down near the uh, floor. Because that will cover up any remarks there. And we've got a bee in the room. <laughs> That's quite light up there, so there's a lot of warmth, a lot of warmth in the picture. I'll just use some yellow and white and just uh, can't see what the picture is. Might as well use do that while I'm here. Add yellow and sienna and you get gold. A bit more yellow. No white with that, it's just gold. And then we can add white to it for the edges where the light's catching it. Oh, there's brushes. Need them. Need them. A bit of white on the edge of this, or a bit more white actually, mix it with the yellow because we've got this lovely light catching it. I've done a thicker frame, but uh, it doesn't matter. Like that. On one side, and then we've got the more white, same on this side. The window. Look at the window. It's got a kind of purple tone to it. I can tell. I can bet ten to one it didn't do it at this speed. <coughs> so this is the. It's the kind of a lizardine. And. Um, the grey I used earlier in the background, but I want it to be quite watery because I'm going to use some white over the top later, but it's negative, it's darker than the white. And you've, got your, you've got your windows there, can you see? <coughs> I'm just doing a bit of a scumble. You probably didn't do it this way, but I'm doing it this way because it's quicker. You probably spent a long time just... For later, uh, yeah. I said a bit of 
probably black and blue. It's a, a bluish tone. I'll land black, sorry, I can call it either. <coughs> it's a bluish tone, which gives you that kind of cool colour. And then that's coming down to your window. Like that. Just inside the windowsill as well. Lots of straight lines in this. Uh, the floor, we've got floorboards. Lovely shirt, actually. I put that in and I just added the light later. <coughs> because you can see the floor, you can see the gaps in the floorboards. In front of there, that blends into there. That's your little foot on your stool. Let's have a look at the um, the light catching these now. So I've got a bit more white and blue, right? White and black here. This is giving me this kind of bluish tone. Okay. Which is going to be a lot of this, these folds in the fabric. Right. Coming from there and then blending in steps like that. Stand by, have a drink. Yeah, like that abstract shape. <laughs> Looking through the, uh, the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Screen keeps going black. I don't know. Still, I'm still running. Yeah, 15 people watching it. Very good. Sorry. If it's your internet, you buy yourself a booster. That's what I did. It's been fine since. The next thing I need is a microphone, so I'll have to get that soon. Just going into my window, got this lovely kind of cream colour again. Okay. I can look quite quick, I might finish this. Cream is a bit of sienna and white, quite a bit of white. Okay. Opaque. Cream. Cream. Sienna. Sienna. Touch of sienna, touch of, uh, and a lot of white because you want it to be like a, a, a warmer colour. I'm going down the door with that on both sides, and then you can see where there's a bit of a shadow on the picture <coughs> on one side. Where the lights catching things. Okay. We can have it leave the charcoal as it is, which is a good idea. <coughs> as you see this change here, that's pure white. That's the light catching the door. We can add a bit more here just to lighten that. All the way down to top of a knee and a finger. She's got some light on a finger. Amazing what you start to see when you start squinting and looking. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Just going to take her hair back a bit because I just noticed all of her face is showing. Sienna. It doesn't use very much uh, blue. Um, Complementary colours. Did I use black? No, over the top of this. Yeah. 
Like the death of these fruit flies. Yeah. Um, yeah, that dark area, which is all the same colour. And to the knee, again. to the leg and then it goes a bit lighter in the middle where the muscle is. You can either take it off like that, go into the shoe Is it? Motorbike. Mm -hmm. Front of the foot, shoe, all the same. Front of the shoe, and that other one, the back. <coughs> Let's try and get this uh, drapery done. Okay, so I've got a nice dark shape there, kind of a, a grey. Um, I've got this triangle shape coming down here. Yeah, that's coming down there. That's the top of the. She's white on its own and uh, fix it with the colour and then put it in. Right. And that'll just kind of change the tone there and goes that way. And that's changed the tone slightly. Squint. Just to show you. The difference now, if I put pure white on the back, where the creases are, <coughs> it's the back of the chair and coming down it as deep and angular as you can. This is pure white. If I come all the way down there. Uh, <coughs> yep, and we get a crease here. Drab. 
Yeah, they don't start from an eight and a seven. Okay, so you start to paint the shit, these lovely darts in the fabric, trying to get the shapes right, like a big jigsaw puzzle actually. Give it that way. This comes all the way down to the floor, see. Give it that way. That comes down in here. Again, a bit of white. Go through the edge and then go in that way. Which meets this bit, it's quite big. Black again. So you that angle. <coughs> well, I've got that colour. I'm going to do the frame. Yeah. Back. No candles, yeah. <coughs> Four candles. Four candles. Black. Elizabeth. Mix them together. It's actually got a lovely kind of uh, very light line on the left hand side. You can have some um, cadmium red as well to warm it a bit. Red. <clears throat> All right. I'll give you ten minutes and then uh, see what I can do with these curtains. I'll swing them first, and then we'll do a bit more before I go outside and go first. Well, it is, <clears throat> yeah, so where the curtains are, this is going a lot up later. Right, so. Gonna use a big brush, pick some white up. We've got a lovely strong white, you see? Now if you drag that down. Here we've got one that goes all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Here it just goes over the window slightly. This is just pure white. We've got a lovely pure white bit there, stops there. And there. This is going to be a little bit warmer on the right because it's in front of a building so we've got these shapes might go a bit dark as well like that swing <coughs> edge of building that's it not too far away from that.
slap it on. And from here, I've got a lovely light just kept in the windowsill. And then the frame. I should be using a smaller brush, but I can't be bothered for that much. Frame. Uh -huh. Then from the top of the cell, I'm getting this fold in the fabric going up. And there's one next to it, uh -huh. and there's one here, hold to the stroke, there we go, go up and down, that's it, a light shining through, a light shines through the angle of the floor. I've got one here, but this is the this is a building, but there's also a, a, a curve in the in the fabric. I've got a window there that's just very kind of definite. I don't want to do too much information. Okay. A fair bit coffee because the knees should be should be lower down actually. About here. Not fair it. Um and this is the right, small brush. Arm of chair. Again, back. And this is pure white. Same thing happening here. Pure white. Needs to be quite thick. Keep us clean. Quite thick. the white for the you know on the painting you just pick it up to do some of the creases all right which I was way out with really still Put it slightly warmer as you come in towards the front. That's the inner. Be 
and chips. Look, <clears throat> the man. Smell like that. it up. It's the end of a mic. Like this. It's got a good quality. Light when it hits the floor. And warm. I need the shadows as well. You know what I mean? I'm brushing my over there. Oh. Don't rush it. Why? You got this lovely shadow. Foreground shapes. Yeah. Gears. I thought they'd been this morning. Did you get a few? <laughs> Come back. <coughs> and then the devil's in the detail. It's just kind of lots of white. Highlights. There's not a lot of highlights here either. Got a bit on the front. Got that lovely white on the cheek. Front of the neck. And the top of the cup. Finish the door off. Put it back in. Damn it. Just going to use my paint up. Reflections on the floor. You can see where the light on the floorboard is there. And there. And just under the stool. <laughs> Again, you've got the cracks in the floorboards, and now that blends in. Lovely blender. <coughs> that blends in. You can blend it with your blendy brush. Like that. Fabulous. And then we just bring out some of these, so uh, the light on the front. Down the arm. So I want to get I want to get these out. So you're coming down here and across.
gives you an idea how stressed he gets when he paints one of these. <laughs> well done, Jack. Yep. Isn't it? It's just all about folds and fabric. Finish it off. I'm going to leave it ten past, done over an hour, so it's a lovely day today. I won't get out again. Anyway, finish them off. How are you doing them? Um, I'll just turn it. It looks like that. Good thing. It just needs a few more stronger whites and highlights. Uh, just turn it a bit. And that's it. I've not had it plugged in, have I? I forgot. Thanks, Judith. I like doing windows. Uh, <laughs> see you all next Monday. Uh, we're going on charcoal and acrylic glazes. Okay? Just up paper again. Have a good weekend. Bye for now.